Welcome to Manufacturing Tech Australia with Shane Williams and Paul Mason. All right, so I'm here with Dom from Nexobot. Thanks for joining us, Dom. Nice to meet you, Paul. Excellent. Well, what have we got here, mate? This looks pretty interesting. It kind of looks like that line-following robot I did back in Mechatronics 20-odd years ago at yeah. uni. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's all, all based on the same um, general approach. Cool. So essentially, this is our locally developed yeah. um, sourcing system. Great for parcels, items, mm -hmm. any sort of logistics environment. Essentially, you place the cards on top of the robot. Yep. You'll be able to do that in a second when it comes around. Cool. And then the robot follows these lines. And then when it gets to one of these shorts, right, well, when, then when it gets to the sorting points, it yep. hits the RFID tag, which yep. then sends it down the sorting points. The um, on. box goes onto the robot. Yeah. And then the box gets blocked by the barrier. And then the box just falls down the hole. Cool. And that's essentially a sorted Carson. Nice. I love it. It's so simple. Exactly. No like expensive actuators or anything over complicated things breaking down. 100%. Yeah, excellent. So at what sort of scale could you like scale this up to? Is this sort of small things, large yeah. setups? Let's throw another one. Oh. Yeah, so the robot itself is designed to work to about 30 kilograms. Yep. <laughs> um, we can do about 600 cartons per hour with this system. Yeah. And it's really targeted more towards the small to medium size operations. Right. So, Right now in the market, there really isn't anything that targets companies that are doing a few hundred to a few thousand cartons per day. Yeah. They're all really targeted towards people that do tens of thousands totally. of items a day. Absolutely. But what we're doing is we're essentially, you know, we call it democratizing sorting yeah. and just making this kind of technology accessible to mm. companies of a whole range of different sizes. Yeah, fantastic. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's lots of people out there looking for small, and you know, it's not accessible to some smaller operations and they're often scared off by it. Exactly. So I'm, I'm wondering, you know, cause I'm looking at this guy and this is kind of like, you know, an AMR that you typically spend, you know, I don't know, $100,000, $150,000 on an AMR that exactly. kind of looks similar to this, do a similar thing. Obviously you got your lines and things like that, but I'm guessing mm. this doesn't cost anywhere near that. No, so we actually don't charge anything for the system up front. Mm -hmm. We charge per item that goes across the system. Yeah. So our first customer is a regional on forwarder based out of Warrigal. That's the one here? That's the one over here, yeah. yeah. Cool. And we're actually able to deploy that system for them, yeah. give them a good saving on labor, yeah. and also put automation into an operation that usually just wouldn't have a fit for fit for purpose solution. Yeah, right. Great. And that so, solution took, you know, a couple of weeks to put in for the customer on okay. sites. Yeah. And um, the team is down there now using it themselves. Yeah, right. And obviously you can just you can change the layout around whatever yeah. you needed to do. So these black lines, these are just printed on the table itself. Okay. There's no um, magnets or electronics happening underneath. Yeah. It's literally just printed core flute. Yeah, right. And very, very simple. And when we were talking before, um, we are talking about how, um, oh, I've just gone completely blank. What was I going to say? I don't know, were you talking about the fact that the things are 3D printed here? And That's all exactly all that? what I was going to say. What's yeah. your partner's name again? Um, Lally. Lally. Yeah. So, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're talking with Lali before and she was saying everything's 3D printed here locally. We don't have supply chain issues. We've got funny exactly. a supply chain conference like this, but you know, we don't have issues sourcing mm -hmm. the parts. We can build it all here locally. Yeah. There's nothing, you know, super critical there that you can't access mm -hmm. and build here. Yeah. So the robot itself, all the external shell is all um, 3D printed using PLA. Yeah. So PLA is actually a bioplastic. Yeah. So that means that the external shell of the robot is a lot more environmentally friendly because mm. there's no um, oil-based plastics in there. Right, perfect. And it can also fully biodegrade as well. Okay. So if that's placed into a PLA um, PLA composter, yeah. it'll actually break down. Yeah, great. Which is pretty unique for plastics. Yeah. Well, what sort of life cycle will you get out of that before it start breaking down? Or would yeah. have to be in a compost to break down? Sorry? Would have to be in a compost to break down or? Yeah, so they would have to break down. It would take, you know, it'd have to be in a specialized composter. Yeah, okay. But the robot itself is, um, I mean, they haven't been in the market really long enough to yeah. know what the expected life of the robots are yet. Right, and you've only been around for one or two years, right? Yeah, so we founded the company about 18 months ago. Okay. And we've been live with our first customer for about a month now. Fantastic, good story. Yeah, very good, exciting. Good local ingenuity. Yeah. So the unique component really is that barrier system. Yeah. That's the piece that's um, our unique invention. Okay. And that's the bit that really enables the low cost nature yeah. of this solution. Yeah, without all the complex parts to push yeah. things on and off. And 
Yeah, great, fantastic. Thanks for coming on the show, Dom. No, it's really thank interesting. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in to Manufacturing Tech Australia with Shane and Paul.